Hello and welcome to the tiny book reading of Tangled. Let's begin. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, a single drop of sunlight fell to the ground. The drop took root and grew into a golden flower with magical healing powers. The only person who knew of the flower's location was a mean woman named Mother Gothel. Vain and selfish, the old woman hid the flower away. She needed its power to stay young forever. Then, tragically, the kingdom's beloved queen grew gravely ill. Desperate to save her, the townspeople searched high and low for the legendary flower. At last they found it. Mother Gothel watched in horror as her treasured flower was torn from the ground. A potion was made from the flower and given to the queen. She drank it and recovered at once. Soon after, she gave birth to a beautiful golden-haired girl. Not long after, Mother Gothel snuck into the nursery. Singing her song, she cut a lock of the baby's hair, but instead of restoring her youth, the golden hair turned brown. With no other way to get the magic she needed, Mother Gothel snatched up the baby and stole away into the night. The king and queen were heartbroken. Desperate to keep the power of the girl's hair for herself, Mother Gothel locked her in a high tower in a hidden valley. And so it was that Rapunzel grew up, all alone, but her isolation could not dampen Rapunzel's bright spirit. Rapunzel made the most of her time inside the tower. She did puzzles, baked, sang songs, and painted the walls again and again. Each day, Mother Gothel climbed up Rapunzel's hair to reach the tower. There, she would sing her song to restore her youth. As Rapunzel's 18th birthday approached, she asked Mother Gothel for a gift. She wanted to go see the floating lights that rose into the sky each year on her birthday. Mother Gothel refused. She told Rapunzel that the world was a dangerous place, full of people who would hurt her for her hair. Mother Gothel's words terrified Rapunzel. The only way to stay safe, it seemed, was to remain in her tower. Elsewhere in the kingdom, a thief named Flynn Rider was on the run. He and the Stabbington brothers had stolen the lost princess's tiara. Now the palace guards were after him. The guards' lead horse, Maximus, chased Flynn over the edge of a cliff and onto a thin tree branch. Suddenly, the branch snapped. Flynn and Maximus fell. Flynn found himself in a valley. Spying a tower rising in the distance, he smiled to himself. The isolated tower seemed like a fine place to hide. Flynn scaled the walls of the tower, but as he climbed inside, Clang! A frying pan came down on his head. Rapunzel dragged the unconscious Flynn to a wardrobe. Perhaps this act of bravery would prove to Mother Gothel that she could take care of herself in the outside world. 
Inside Flynn's bag, Rapunzel found the tiara. Curious, she put it on. As she looked at herself in the mirror, a spark of recognition washed over her. Just then, Mother Gothel arrived. Rapunzel tried to tell her about the intruder to prove she could be brave, but Mother Gothel flew into a rage. Realizing Mother Gothel would never let her leave, Rapunzel had an idea. She asked Mother Gothel for paint from a flower that grew far away. To Rapunzel's delight, Mother Gothel agreed to go find it. Telling Rapunzel she'd be back in three days, she set off. A short while later, Flynn awoke to find himself tied to a chair with Rapunzel's hair. He tried to charm her, but it was no use. Rapunzel proposed a deal. She promised to give the tiara back to Flynn if he would take her to see the floating lights. Flynn had no choice but to agree. Using her hair, Rapunzel lowered herself to the ground. Delight filled her heart as her feet touched the grass for the very first time. She was free. But Rapunzel was still afraid of the outside world. What if she was in danger? At the thought of betraying Mother Gothel, Rapunzel burst into tears. Flynn tried to convince her to just go back to her tower, but she would not hear of it. Straightening up, Rapunzel took her first steps into the world. She was going to see the lanterns, no matter what. Elsewhere in the forest, Mother Gothel spied Maximus. Fearing that the guards had at last found Rapunzel, she raced back to the tower. In the tower, Mother Gothel found the tiara and a wanted sign with Flynn's face on it. Now she knew who had taken Rapunzel, and she was determined to get her back. Seeing Rapunzel's fear of the world, Flynn hatched a plan to send her running back to her tower. He led her into a pub called the Snuggly Duckling. Inside, Rapunzel found herself face to face with a room full of the meanest thugs around. Panicked, Rapunzel turned for home. But as they made for the door, one of the thugs recognized Flynn. The thug grabbed for Flynn, but Rapunzel stopped them. She explained her dream of seeing the floating lights. To her surprise, she learned that the thugs had dreams too. Just then, the royal guards burst into the pub. Eager to help Rapunzel, the thugs led her and Flynn to a trap door. The two fled into a secret passageway. Outside, Mother Gothel watched furious. She realized that Rapunzel hadn't been kidnapped. She'd left willingly. Seizing a thug, she demanded to know where the tunnel led out. Meanwhile, Flynn and Rapunzel made their way through the tunnel, but Maximus was close behind. Using her hair as a rope, Rapunzel and Flynn swung over a deep gorge. Landing, they found the Stabbington brothers waiting for them. Holding Rapunzel, Flynn fled into a cavern. Behind him, a dam burst. Water quickly began filling the cave. Flynn searched for a way out, but there was nothing. They were stuck. 
Worried they would die, Flynn told Rapunzel a secret. His real name was Eugene Fitzherbert. Suddenly, Rapunzel remembered her own secret, her hair. It glowed when she sang. Singing her song, she used the light from her hair to find a way out of the cave. As they dragged themselves to shore, Rapunzel saw a cut on Flynn's hand. Wrapping her hair around it, she began to sing. Nearby, Mother Gothel caught up with the Stabbingtons. She offered them the tiara and much more if they helped her persuade Rapunzel to come home. That night, as Flynn gathered firewood, Mother Gothel approached Rapunzel. She explained that Flynn just wanted the tiara. He did not care about Rapunzel. <clears throat> Rapunzel refused to believe Mother Gothel. She had started to care about Flynn, and she knew he felt the same about her. The next morning, Rapunzel awoke to find Maximus dragging Flynn away. Jumping to her feet, she begged him to stop. Rapunzel explained that it was her birthday. All she wanted was to see the floating lights, but for that she needed Flynn. Just then, a bell rang in the distance. Rapunzel followed the sound through the forest. As she neared the top of the hill, the whole kingdom came into view. Stepping through the gates of the palace, Rapunzel was overcome by the hustle and bustle. She had never seen so many people in one place. A group of little girls saw her hair and grew excited. Working together, they wove it into a beautiful braid. Meanwhile, a little boy sold Flynn a flag with the kingdom symbol, a golden sun. On the wall, Rapunzel saw a mosaic of the king and queen holding the lost princess. Rapunzel stared in wonder. The baby had sparkling green eyes, just like hers. The music started to play and Flynn whirled Rapunzel around and around the town square. She had never been so happy. As the sun set, Flynn led Rapunzel to a boat. The two rowed far into the water as the lanterns rose all around them. Rapunzel's dream had finally come true. Realizing she trusted Flynn, Rapunzel gave him the tiara. At that moment, Flynn spotted the Stabbingtons on the shore. Flynn rode to the shore, promising to be right back. He planned to give the tiara to the Stabbingtons to make them go away. As Flynn approached, the Stabbingtons seized him. Tying him up, they put him on a boat bound for the kingdom. As Rapunzel waited for Flynn, the Stabbingtons attacked her. She shouted for help, but the brothers pointed to a boat. Flynn was sailing away without her. As she dodged the Stabbingtons, Mother Gothel appeared and rescued her. Rapunzel was devastated. Mother Gothel had been right. Flynn cared only about the tiara. Meanwhile, Maximus watched as Flynn's boat crashed ashore without Rapunzel. Maximus knew something was wrong. He galloped off to get help. A short time later, the pub thugs appeared and broke Flynn out of jail. Together, Max and Flynn raced off to find Rapunzel. 
back in the tower, Rapunzel held the small kingdom flag in her hands. Suddenly, she realized something. She had been painting this sun symbol all her life. Rapunzel thought about the symbol. She thought about the tiara and the lost princess's bright green eyes. In that moment, Rapunzel knew she was the princess. Rapunzel confronted Mother Gothel, who tied her up. She was not going to let Rapunzel get away again. Down below, Max and Flynn arrived at the base of the tower. Flynn called for Rapunzel and her golden hair cascaded to the ground. But it was not Rapunzel waiting for Flynn. It was Mother Gothel. Striking out at the thief, she wounded him badly. Then she chained him to the wall. A tied up Rapunzel looked on in horror. She loved Flynn. She did not want to see him die. Turning to Mother Gothel, she vowed to stay with her forever if she could heal Flynn. Gently, Rapunzel approached Flynn. He would not let her give up her freedom for him. When she was not looking, he grabbed a shard of glass and cut off her hair. Mother Gothel let out a shriek. With the magic of Rapunzel's hair gone, she instantly aged hundreds of years and turned to dust. Sobbing, Rapunzel grabbed Flynn's hand. She tried to heal him, but it was no use. There was no magic left. Slowly, a single tear fell from Rapunzel's eye. As it hit Flynn, a golden glow encircled him, the last of Rapunzel's magic. He opened his eyes, fully healed. Rapunzel wrapped her arms around Flynn, and the two shared their first kiss. Flynn and Maximus took Rapunzel to the kingdom, where she was reunited at last with the king and queen. Rapunzel was back where she belonged. Thanks to Flynn, she had found her family, and she would never leave either of them again. The end. Thank you guys for listening. If you enjoyed that, don't forget to like and subscribe.